I am going to talk about response spectrum. So let's take a look at it. Um, why would I perform a response spectrum analysis? I want to perform a fast analysis for one, and I want to learn what the maximum results would be as, uh, as a result of some sort of shock, earthquake, or other dynamic load. The kinds of results I can obtain are deflections, velocities, accelerations, forces, stresses, and strains. It, like I said, it's faster than a structural analysis, but the question becomes how. What is a response spectrum? Well, it really is a response. It's really a result that we're applying to our natural frequencies to scale them. There are response spectrums readily available, already created, and uh, we can also create these ourselves. As an output, a response spectrum is a collection of maximum results produced by a transient structural analysis of an array of single degree of freedom oscillators. Sounds kind of funny. We're going to learn more about that. As an input, the response spectrum can be used as an input to quickly predict the response of different models based on this load type and the model's natural frequencies. If we look at the illustration on the right hand side, we'll see that this is a response spectrum that is developed while considering 5% damping. So it's important to understand that when we develop a response spectrum, the damping is built into it. If we think about a single degree of freedom system, like the image on the right, we have a spring in the middle, constrained at its base, and we have a mass on the top, and it's able to vibrate up and down. We can approximate that natural frequency using the formula at the bottom of the screen. And if we wanted to find the transient response, we could solve the equation of motion for this system and consider damping as well. From this, we could determine the displacement velocity and acceleration response. If I have a collection of single, de free, single degree of freedom uh, oscillators, and I have a load that I want to learn what the response spectrum would, would uh, look like, I would define my load, I would perform a transient analysis, and I would get my response at each one of these different uh, single degree of freedom systems. Keep in mind, they all look like they're, they're the same, but they actually have different masses and they all have different natural frequencies. We pick out the largest magnitude of our response from each one of these oscillators, and we plot that versus the frequency, the natural frequency of that oscillator. And what we produce is a response spectrum. We can convert a response spectrum from one form to another by using these simple equations. Whenever we are making a response spectrum, we're thinking in terms of pseudo displacement, pseudo velocity, and pseudo acceleration. So these three plots are considered to be equivalent. Let's take a look at a couple demonstrations. I'm going to discuss uh, the number of modes, spectrum type, uh, modal combination type, output controls, and results. Let's take a look. So I think the first thing I want to do is just simply take a look at of an example of a how to develop a response spectrum. I have here a transient structural analysis that I've already set up. Each of these springs that looks like a, a stick there, but it's a spring, uh, is the same, but the masses are different on the top of each one, such that each of these produce a different natural frequency. We can see what those are on the right here, a range of values. We define a, an acceleration impulse. In my case, I'm interested in an acceleration impulse. Maybe you're interested in an earthquake loading. 
either way, uh, whatever our load is that we're interested in, we can define that and then we can run our analysis. As a result, we get a lot of information. Uh, each one of these oscillators has its own type of plotted data. And from that, we can derive whatever the response spectra spectrum would be. And if I were to perform a response spectrum analysis on this same geometry and apply my response spectrum to it in terms of accelerations, I could see what my deflection results would be. So we look at this number, we see that it's 0 0.0036. Let's look at our transient solution. And we could see we have 0 0.0034. Very close, not exactly the same, but one took a lot less effort to get to if I already have a response spectrum to apply. Let's look at a different example. This is a simple bar. I've constrained one end of it back here. I like simple models, obviously. And I performed a modal analysis. One of the key factors about this, as I look at these frequencies, is that the frequencies are the, practically the same in groups of two. And if we look at the mode shape, we could see that we have a vibration mode in one direction. When we look at the next adjacent frequency, it's practically the same frequency, but it's orthogonal. So that's true for each of these progressions. Whenever we have symmetric geometry like this, we will get closely spaced frequencies. And this becomes important whenever we want to perform a response spectrum analysis. So how do I perform a response spectrum analysis? Uh, in this case, I'm going to go to the analysis pull down menu and choose response spectrum. I'm going to indicate what modal analysis I'm using. This is a requirement. I'm using this one that I have right here, I'm saying. I'm going to visit the analysis settings. I see that by default, I'm using uh, all of the modes. The spectrum type is a single point. It could also be multiple points. The mode combination type is SRSS. I have three different choices here. Besides that, I have complete quadratic combination and the Rosenbluth uh, method. We're going to touch on those a little bit more. I'm going to calculate velocity and acceleration because I want those results available. I need more information. That's the reason why I have the question mark. So I'm going to right click and insert and I have three choices as far as the types of response spectrum that I can accept. I'm going to choose an acceleration type. And I'm just going to paste what I've already had here. This is the response spectrum that I calculated earlier. I'm going to define what supports it acts on. Indicate what direction. I'll say it acts in the Y direction. And it's not scaled other than its original value. I'm going to run the analysis. The analysis proceeds quickly. Two reasons. Well, my model's really simple. The other reason is it's a response spectrum analysis and it's meant to be faster. Let's see what kinds of results that we can get. Let's look at a deformation. Let's evaluate this. And let's take a look at what we see here. We're not going to see a deflected shape, but we'll see where the ma maximum deflections would be. Let's insert a stress. We'll look at an equivalent stress and we'll evaluate this. One of the things that we'll notice, and this may be visible uh, easily here, but when we look at the Y direction, we see that the stress is kind of off to the side. When we go back to our modal analysis results. And if we were to look at this, write down the Z axis and animate this, we'll see that the mode shape is a little bit off to the side. 
well, since I'm applying my load in the Y, I would expect that to be right at the top. So what can I do to make this better? Let me duplicate my analysis and I'm going to make one change. Well, I'm going to wait first. I'm going to visit the analysis settings and I'm going to change the combination type to rows. Now we're going to see what this does here. While it analyzes, I'm just going to simply say that the rows method handles closely spaced frequencies better. So now when we look at these st stresses, they're right at the top and it's a higher magnitude as well. Let's go back to our presentation and, and review what we've covered. So the input, we need to have modal analysis results. Uh, we're not going to be able to incorporate any modal damping uh, if we're if our intention uh, it is to perform the response spectrum analysis. The response spectrum is applied through the supports and we can define it either as displacement versus frequency, velocity versus frequency, or acceleration versus frequency. And about these modal combination methods, if I want to consider added damping in my response spectrum analysis, I'm not going to be able to do it if I use the SRSS method. So if I did apply any type of other damping, uh, let's say material damping, it will simply be ignored. The complete quadratic combination method actually requires that I define additional damping in my response spectrum analysis, else it's not available to be used. It's another method that's good for closely spaced frequencies like the model that we just looked at. I use the Rosenbluth's double sum combination method. One of the advantages is just like the complete quadratic combination in the sense that it can consider damping or it could have damping excluded. The results that we obtain, that we can obtain, are deflections, velocities, accelerations, forces, stresses, and strains. And we're getting the peak or steady state depending on our load. Remember, we're reflecting back what our uh, response spectrum input, how it was made on our new geometry. I'm looking forward to hearing Cameron tell us more about random vibration. Thank you.